Hello, hello, and welcome to the end of day seven on the Colorado Trail. We're about a mile from the Mount Massive turnoff, which we will be conquering tomorrow. We're making some dinner right now as the sun sets. As you can see, it's not raining. We got so lucky with that. We walked away from a lot of clouds today. We dodged thunder all day. Yeah. All day. Unlike yesterday. Yeah, I'm so excited that my shoes can be dry by tomorrow. I have blister protection on from a blister. Ryan, what's going on with your feet? I wrapped up my feet. I've got competes on the back of my heels. That's a blister treatment. I've got, I uh, wrapped my, uh, the padding of my feet, of each foot, um, right under where the toes meet, conjoin. <laughs> right where the toe, right where the toe, where the toes meet the feet. <laughs> We're pretty tired. Last night, we got a nice night. By the way, what's in our bag? Might as well do that. We brought two stoves. We didn't have to bring two stoves, but this is a new stove for Ryan. He wanted to play. I've got a stove now. I got some fuel. Uh, we've both been carrying bear canisters. Yeah, we didn't need to, but I like them. Keeps things neat. It is too heavy. What else we got? Gravity filter. We got the platypus water filter. Uh, gives us four liters at a time. It's great if you're hiking with one other person. Uh, it's also or great if people. you're or a group of people. It's also great if you're alone because you can readjust your bag or have a snack while uh, gravity works. While your water filters for you. No, we've got uh, you know, two pairs of shoes, hiking shoes, water shoes. Those are great to wear around at night when your tent is set up. We've got our tents, obviously, our mattresses. Both have the foam mattress. The the pad. It's not a mattress. It's a pad. pad foam yeah. pad. Uh, you. Most of the hikers have pads. I had a mattress last year and it popped like the second night. I had a blow up pillow popped before we even started on the trail <laughs> this year. <laughs> uh, so, you know, as much as I try to, to bring some convenience to my hike, uh, I'm doing what everybody else is doing, which is using the clothing bag as a pillow. And, uh, oh yeah, and a pad instead of a mattress. I love the gravity filter because um, it is, just as Ryan says, it's really fast for doing four liters, uh, even if you're doing two liters. A lot of people, most people have the single, um, you know, filter on a bag. And uh, what we keep seeing everybody doing is filling the, the dirty bag, putting the filter on it, and then squeezing that into a secondary cup but they're squeezing as hard as they can to get it through the filter, which I don't think that's really good for the filter. <coughs> I don't either. I was thinking about that. Um, we have one of those for backup, just in case something goes wrong with this, but I've used this for years. I've changed the filter, and um, it seems to do well, especially at, at, in the morning for breakfast, for meals. When you're going to boil water, it's so nice to have just a lot of water. Yeah. Um, I love these little uh, spoon forks, the C to Summit. So we each have one of these, and then we each have just Joe Plastic camping Cups. cup. <laughs> and everything goes in here. Coffee, I've got soup in here right now, Swiss Miss, uh, mashed potatoes, toothpaste. That's how we brush our teeth in the morning. And a lot of people have the new shelf stable tuna products. And I do, I'm one of those people. By the way, uh, the small canister, this is day eight, right? Day, day seven. seven. Day seven. 
So we've been doing two burns a day each, and we haven't used up the small canister. That was a concern of ours. Uh, obviously, tomorrow's day eight. It could theoretically happen. We can't use it on um, Mount Massive tomorrow because it's pressurized gas. There has to be pressure, and there's a lot less pressure at the top of a mountain. So unless it's brand new, and maybe even then it won't work, uh, but definitely when it's old, it's just not going to, nothing's going to really spit out. So I'll be bringing some tuna to the top of the mountain, even though I'm having tuna now. I wish I knew I had so many tunas because I would have eaten more. Last night we didn't get dinner. Actually, that's why I've got an extra one, because last night we didn't get dinner. That's right. Oh, can you imagine a whole day of hiking and not getting dinner? That's what we did last night. That's what we did last night. It was night. raining too hard. Yeah. Oh. Oh, we're also, we're at 11,000 feet right now. Boy, this is just a big explain-all. Tell them everything. Uh, and so things like the soup take twice as long to rehydrate at this altitude. And the air in packets of coffee well, don't watch that don't you didn't see that trick i'm sorry go ahead the the air in our co instant coffee packets is super inflated so the yeah. packets are super inflated yeah if they were doritos they probably would have popped yeah mm, doritos yeah that sounds good that <laughs> sounds good well, what's the first thing you're gonna have when we get back to civilization oh man there's a lot of things i want um you know falafels would be great Leadville is famous for their falafels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. I was craving Beyond Beef sausages, breakfast sausages. That might, they might have Burger King. Although I didn't see Burger King on the way in. Nah, I don't really want to do Burger King. I did Burger King on day two. I want something a little better. That's going to be tough because Leadville is not the metropolis that one might think. The cuisine metropolis. I think we're going to end up going to a diner and getting whatever we can. Fries would be fine. Fries would be great. That's what we did at the Mexican place as well. Yeah, I ate a lot of those. Fries would be great. <laughs> whatever we have, we're probably going to have two. Remember the time we went up to Half Dome and we stayed? Uh, we're, God, that took us. That was like a 12 hour hike. Long. And then that night we were staying in one of the most extravagant, <coughs> extravagant hotel is. Yeah. Because I needed connectivity. I had a bunch of proposals due. And I had planned on having that off day. You and Neil went down to the river and signed you up for an art class. Yep, yep. While I was doing all my business work. Um, so we got in and went to room service ordered for three people five cheeseburgers and spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was fun and fries and i think we had six cokes <laughs> they're probably like god damn it what are these people doing these hikers all right well i'm already gotten into the tuna i'm exhausted we do have connectivity so we're gonna get back into touch i think before we go to sleep yeah, we're going to talk to some people tonight. Sun is setting in 12 minutes. The Colorado Trail has been fantastic, by the way. Well, I guess we I should mean, talk about the Colorado Trail. <laughs> just to be able to be exhausted at the end of the day, put yourself through a challenge. That's all very um, fulfilling. And uh, to, to get to see so many things along the way is just incredible. You know, hundreds of species of plants um different species of trees different species of mushrooms different species of birds you really are just constantly oh we saw like stimulated. a wild pheasant today did we saw a pheasant i today. don't know if it was a, it was pretty big i didn't know what it was the closest thing was a pheasant in my head it walked like a pheasant talked like a pheasant that's right must be a pheasant must be a pheasant um Big shout out to uh, segment eight uh, with all the sage. Oh yeah. And uh, just getting a, 
a massive uh, view the entire way down the mountain in that area. Segment eight's really cool. Segment seven is fantastic. Uh, going from um, peak four to peak five, uh, you know, you get to see Breckenridge and then Copper Mountain on two different sides. And, uh, you know, big shout out to all the other hikers just pushing themselves to accomplish such a intense challenge. You it know. is really interesting to run into people. You run into people for like two or three days and then you never see them again. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, we saw B, we saw Ray, we saw Stan uh, the first few days. That was really cool. Then we started talking to Casey and John and Carly kept up. Carly we saw the most. And uh, there's uh, Mike and, and Tim who didn't quite accomplish their goal, but still just so cool to, to get out there and, and give it a shot in the time that you have. Mike sent me a text for his model of hammock tent. You learn a lot on the way. Oh yeah, everybody's got a different methodology for everything. People, Some of them are good. Yeah. People are coming in from all over. You know, we saw Wisconsin, we saw Minnesota, we saw Washington, Iowa. It's just a beautiful thing to to get out to hike, to be in nature and to to meet people in nature away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life and you get people at, at their best here unless of course they're tired and rained on but, yes but that's still part of it and have hiccups call it yep all right thanks for tuning in we've we'll got mount massive mount massive tomorrow yeah. peace